Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to inoculate mushroom blocks using grain spawn. Alright, so here we have our spawn. This is a blue oyster mushroom spawn. And basically what spawn is, is just a nutritious grain that you can apply to your uh, main bulk substrates, your blocks. These are just mixes of soy hole and uh, hardwood, so 50-50 of that material. And then we obviously hydrate it and then sterilize it. That's a whole nother process. But I'm just going to show you how to use this grain and basically uh, transfer all the little particles of grain into all these different bags. So we can inoculate many bags and have many mushrooms. There's a couple different ways to do this. Um, the goal here is to transfer this substrate, this sterile grain that's been inoculated with the mushroom mycelium, um, into these bags without getting contamination. So how do we do that? The first thing is, uh, want to think about is, how do we pour the grain without mold and bacteria in the air getting on the inside of our, our bags? Now, it's going to colonize quickly, depending on how much you use. If you use a lot of grain, the blocks will colonize fast, which I can show you over here. Here we have a bunch of little particles inside of the bag. I'm not sure if you can see that. The little tiny white dots. And let's see, within a couple days, they'll be blasting off like this. And that really gives mold and bacteria not much time at all to compete with the mycelium, right? Because if it's growing so fast, the mold and bacteria has already been damaged and well if there's any left from the sterilization process which there shouldn't be but anything from the air it'll take a long time to germinate and reproduce so our mushroom mycelium already has the edge it's already in the bags lots of inoculation points from the individual grains that we broke up and poured into them and we'll get a really quick speedy um, colonization on our bags but again we want to have the most sterile procedure as possible and how do we do that there's two things really you can use. One is a flow hood, so basically blows out clean, sterile air. And here's the rating of mine, it's upside down, but um, it's a 24 inch by 24 inch by 12. So two feet by two feet, big square. And I'll turn this on with this switch I had fixed. I have a little dial here. And it's just gonna blow clean, sterile air out of the hood. Then, I'm free to work on whatever I want without worrying about contamination getting into my bags. They do have a, a lifespan, right, these, these HEPA filters, but they're pretty long and um, for my operation, it's gonna last a while. Then we have another option, which is this big box here. It's called a still air box. And I built this one myself. You can kinda maybe see there's some suds and stuff. That's because I use soap on the inside, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but yeah, basically I uh, use some caulk, I uh, cut holes, use some caulk to seal it, and then I put these little um, PVC fittings, and then I tape these gloves around the inside of these here, and then I have my glove ports. So the idea behind this box is to basically put whatever you're working on inside of it and no contamination will get inside of the box. So how do we make the box clean, right? Because it's still in the open air, there's gonna be particles and bacteria floating around that may get inside. Well, the one thing we do is, well, I, I do, is I suds the box up with soap all around, right? And I also have, um, I spray it down with ice purple alcohol. So I'll spray down all the sides of the, the box and then I will, um, let that, let that dry, clean it out, uh, clean whatever was in there out, and then I'll put soap all around the sides. And then I'll put the lid on. Well, oh, then I'll also spray down whatever I'm gonna be working with and I put it inside of the box. So say I have a jar and I have a little tiny bag I want to inoculate inside of here. So I have a jar of grain. Oh. I have a jar of grain. I'll put it inside the box, and this is what I used to do before I had the flow hood. And then I'll have a small bag, and I'll put it in here. And it's ideal to have a bigger box, because mine's kind of small. But then I'll, I'll, I'll wipe it down with the ice purple alcohol, the cleaning solution. And that means all the outsides of the bags are kind of clean, clean as I can get them. I'll suds up the sides of the box, clean, clean these bags and whatever I'm going to be working with. 
Then I will shut my 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 box, and maybe you want to make gaskets around it so no air really seeps in that you don't want. And basically, I'll let it sit for a good 15 minutes. And what's going to happen? Since there's no turbulence in the air, all the particles are going to fall to the bottom of the box and to the sides, and they're going to stick. And when you move your hands inside the box, none of that stuff will be disturbed because it's going to all the particles are going to stick to the bottom and the sides of your uh, bin. And then after the 15 minutes, 20 minutes is up, then you can get your hands in here and start to work within the box. Um, it's going to be hard. Uh, it's it's not as easy because you know you don't have much space to work with, which is why it's really nice to have a flow hood. The downside of the flow hood is they can cost a little bit. You also need to figure out the fan system and kind of get you know your engineering cap on and figure out how to build this thing. Um, so that's one thing. And for me, I was lucky it wasn't that hard. Um, and if you want me to get into detail about that, I definitely could. But with this, the good thing is, the good thing is, is uh, it doesn't cost much at all. Yeah, anyone can build this. Go to Home Depot, go to Walmart, and get a nice big box, a bigger box than what I use, a bigger tub than what I use, and you can go at it. Now, if you're going to be using like 10 pound blocks and stuff, you might as well just get the flow hood because it's just going to be impossible to work with. All right, so here I'm going to go over, I went over how we inoculate our blocks in the still air box. And now I'm going to show you how I inoculate blocks in mass in front of the HEPA filter. So here we go. First, I, I turn on my fan. Uh, sorry if it's a little loud, but I turn on my fan. I'll go ahead and um, sterilize my surface. I don't know if it's 100% sterilizing, I don't think so, but we're just getting it nice and clean with ice purple alcohol, and we're using 70%. As I've heard, it's just the uh, better uh, ice purple to use. Can, can you see good? Okay. There we go. Now I'm gonna just wipe it down as I can. You should be wearing gloves. I'm just out of gloves right now. Cleaning this. This. Another paper towel. And I'm going to clean my sealer. Put it down. Put it down. Good. So now we have a clean workspace. The fan has been blowing across the surface that I was cleaning, so uh, nothing else has dropped on it, and whatever had, fell on it while, the mach while our fan was off has now been um, cleaned up using ice purple alcohol and hopefully killed any bacteria or mold on the surface of my table. Now let's move our spawn. So this is grain. This is millet grain, my favorite kind. And I'm going to go ahead and just clean this up, squirt it down, all around, inside the gussets, under the bag, around the bag. Also gonna squirt down my hands. You can wash them before if they're dirty. Push them the sleeves a little bit, just get it all clean. Now I have my block here. Just gonna wipe my hands on the bag and make sure it's nice and clean there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and break up the spawn bag. There we go. It's pretty recently colonized, so it breaks up really nicely. And now we got all these beautiful little grains. This is blue oyster mushroom, by the way. Cool. Now what I like to do is I like to grab my knife. So what I'll do with this knife is I have one side, it's kind of burnt as you can might be able to tell, but I'm gonna spray the knife down with ice purple alcohol. And then I'm going to take my blowtorch and I'm going to simply, in front of the fan, heat up my knife with the blowtorch until it gets nice and yellow. Yellow to orange. More orange, but... Now that I have it nice and hot, we can easily cut right through the bag here in front of the flow hood. 
and boom. So make sure we always keep this in front of the flow hood so no contaminants from out here gets inside. Now we're gonna take a block. These bags have been uh, temporarily sealed uh, just by the fact that the, the nature of the way the pressure, cook work, pressure cooker works gets really, these bags get really hot, really cool, really fast, and they create this like vacuum seal. So I'll go ahead and I'll open this bag up in front of the flow hood. And you kind of don't want to talk in front of the flow hood while you're doing this because there's potential for a spit to fall into your bag and then contaminate your bag. I'm gonna take my spawn nice and carefully and just go ahead and gently dump a portion into the bag. Try to keep your hands as far away as you can from the opening of the bag. I'm gonna go ahead and get some air in here. All the air inside the bag is going to do is help me mix it when I go to shake these bags. Lift up my sealer. And seal. If you don't have a sealer, you can very easily just get like a zip tie, a bunch of zip ties, and then just zip tie the whole top of the bag together. That's what a lot of people do if they don't have a sealer. But I have an old sealer here. I used it quite a bit and I got an upgrade. So uh, it still works, but this is pretty cheap. I think I bought it used for like 20 bucks. And it worked good. I sealed like a thousand bags with it. More than a thousand. Here we go. Have our nice seal. This bag is completely contamination free. Check it. Good, good, good. And basically you're able to smash it up and shake it around. Break all the chunks up. And there we have a nice nice mushroom bag. And in just a couple days you'll start to see uh, the white mycelium like I showed you on the other blocks and then eventually we'll have a, a fully colonized blue oyster mushroom block. So yeah, that's pretty much how I inoculate my blocks. And you can also, if you want to transfer that grain onto spawn, use the same procedure. Just be as careful as you can with spawn because you definitely do not want to contaminate that. So why are we trying to protect ourselves from contamination? Why are we trying to get these bags as sterile as possible? Basically, if you get contamination in your bags, they will start to eat the mushroom substrate up. It's a very moist environment, and just like mushrooms, mold and bacteria like it as well. So that's why we use things like pressure cooking, sterilization techniques, just a sterile practice in front of flow hoods and inside the still air box so that we can have the most success growing our mushrooms. Now, if you get contamination in your box, depending on how much, it can really, if there's a lot, it can really hinder the yields of your mushrooms. You might not even get any. Another thing is that you're just introducing that to your grow rooms and that just can cause a mess, right? It, especially if it's blotch, you get blotch on your bags uh, or on your mushrooms and that can, can spread to all your other mushrooms and just wreak havoc on your grow operation. So it's important that we sterilize everything, keep it as clean as possible, and that's why we try to mitigate the factor or even the chance of getting bacteria and mold in, your, in our blocks. Especially in spawn, you get it in your spawn and you transfer it, you are gonna have a tough time. You're gonna be inoculating all these blocks and they're all gonna be contaminated. And might as well just throw them out. If you're trying to scale an operation, you might as well just get rid of them. So, that being said, can you inoculate a block with just grain? The answer, I believe so. Depends how much grain. You use a little bit, it's not gonna colonize quickly. You're just doing this in open air, right? So if you're going to inoculate a block in open air without any sort of sterile technique, you're going to need a lot of spawn. So using a lot of spawn will make colonization really quick. 
If you have quick colonization, there's less time for mold and bacteria to contaminate your bags and overrun your substrate. So that'll be another video. We'll test that out. But I wanted to make sure you guys understood why we're fighting contamination and why it's such a threat to our mushrooms.